Okay. So what I'm going to do now is uh, uh, pull this apart a little bit, kind of show you how things work, and talk for a moment a little bit about the principles involved. I did fail to mention one other thing, which uh, allows you to do a, a straight up uh, installation on a 2017, and that's this. There's been some milling here to take a little bit of uh, metal off of this. That allows the stock OEM cable to be fitted to this without having to go out and buy a new cable. So let me take this apart. So we're, we're pulling the cap off here. There's the cap. This little thing right here is part of the clicker mechanism. We'll go over that in just a minute. There's the spring, and it's nice and straight. If it was bent, it would be wobbling. So we're now going to pull the slide out. That's the retainer for the cable. So when you install a cable, if you can see the two holes here, the cable goes in the outside hole and it slides over to the inside hole. This fits over the cable and when you get over to the inside hole, this will slide down and, and keep the cable from pulling over to the slide and pulling out. So you don't want to forget to put that in place. Um, this is the other part of the clicker mechanism. This piece here, when you pull the slide up using the throttle, will interface with the clicker. And then you push this down and it will go click, click, click. I'm going to put this a little bit back together so you can see the idea. push this up with the spring out. So normally the way you're going to do this is you're going to pull the throttle wide open. That pulls the slide up as far as it go. That in turn, when you push this down, you will be able to engage the top of the slide and you can feel a little click when you turn it. So if you turn it to the to the count clockwise, clockwise, you're richening it. Basically what you're doing is you're pulling the metering rod up and that makes it richer. When you turn it counterclockwise, you're leaning it, you're forcing the metering rod to go down and that leans out the mixture. That's all there is to, to, there is to um, adjusting the mixture in a smart card. There, there isn't anything else. You can play a little bit with the idle screw setting um, but basically that's all there is to it. You can do this on your bike, out in the middle of nowhere, no tools. That's one of the nice things about this. So we'll take this back off. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the slide. I'm going to pull it out here. The slide and the metering rod. The slide controls the amount of air that's coming in, as you lift the throttle, it opens up the passageway more and more and more air comes in. Uh, at the same time, we can look at this rod. I uh, don't know if it's clear, but it has an angled grind on it. That angled grind, when the, when the slide is down low, has got not much surface area for the fuel to flow up through. And as you pull it further and further open, that amount of surface area grows and grows and grows. So this rod is designed through airflow and fuel flow uh, testing to work with a particular engine. And it, therefore, it's important for you to have the correct 
a metering rod for your engine on a smart car because this is the only way that the fuel mixture is modified. You don't change this, this will always be the same, but you do change this metering rod. You change it in a couple of ways. You can either get a different metering rod with a different grind or you can change the location of the existing grind in relationship to the airway. And that you do that through this clicker mechanism right here. This top engages that clicker mechanism when it's in place. So when you pull up the throttle, as we talked in the last video, pull up the throttle, you push down this button, you engage that clicking mechanism right here and you can then turn the clicker left or right. When you turn it clockwise, you're pulling this rod up. This rod goes up, and you're effectively richening the mixture and not changing the air. When you turn it counterclockwise, you're pushing the rod down further, leaning the amount of fuel that can come through the carburetor and not changing the amount of air. So basically, this works as your pilot circuit, your mid-range circuit, and your top-end circuit all in one, one rod. There's only one circuit in a smart, smart car, if you don't count the choke itself. One circuit that, that covers everything. So, one of the things that I like to do, you can do it or not, is I like to verify the number of clicks that was set from the OEM. And one of the things that we know is that this clicker has 10 detents for one full revolution. So that makes it fairly easy for me to figure out how many clicks to full rich it takes. And so I basically put the rod in here to orient it to a particular position on the clock. I'm using it to reference this edge right here. So if I turn it clockwise, I know that that's 10 clicks. I know that it's 86 clicks out according to the book. So I'm going to go, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, ah, 70, so at 70, so I had this out and I, I basically reset it wrong before this video. So this is 70, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I missed it by 10 clicks. So. I suppose this is pretty useful then, because I just made a mistake and found it. So now I'm going to go back out to 86 clicks. And I'm going to start here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now we're back at the original setting in the book. Um, I do want to just mention that everything is pretty high precision on this, so you don't you want to avoid getting any debris in here that can work against the slide. Uh, you don't want any nicks or uh, you don't want to bang it up or drop it or anything like that because then this will either cause sticking or it will cause an air leak. And air leaks uh, will definitely affect the fuel mixture. So uh, I think that's probably about it for this little piece.